What's going on everybody? Today I'm gonna to show you how to drive the natural account by category using the seeded Oracle features. In other words, you don't actually have to modify much except for the things that are already presented to you by Oracle. This is Oracle's standard way of driving the natural account by category using this feature. So let's get after it. All right, the first thing we're gonna do is gonna go over to procurement and then we're gonna take a look at the categories so I can show you that the categories that we want there are actually not there. So let's go into purchasing, expand it. We'll go all the way down and we're looking for categories that start with S U and you'll see they're not there. Okay, and we'll close that down. And now we just open this file that we're going to use to import. If you haven't seen my how to import categories, I will put a link in the description below and you can watch that video. And this is the process to create the CSV file. It's a zip. And then we will now go over and upload. Somebody's made a mess of this screen here. We're going to import the file first. Again, if you want to know how to do this, there's a full video. It's only a couple of minutes that shows you exactly how to import categories. Okay. And now I have uploaded the file to the server. And the next thing we have to do is load that to the interface from the server with that file. So if we put the file in the right place, we will find it. Okay, there it is. When we created, I have submitted it. Bit of refresh gymnastics until this is all succeeded. Now I've sped this up as usual. Okay, so they're all running. And now all done. Okay, completed. Now let's go schedule the process to run the API that imports them to, as to categories. Now that batch ID is sitting there in the file that you use. Again, this is all in the video. Okay, so we put the batch in, ID in there and it will run it. And there we go. Again, a bunch of uh, refreshed gymnastics and all good. Next up, we need to go and take a look at the categories that we've imported. Okay, purchasing, purchasing again. We'll scroll down and there they are. Okay, the SU-MRO, et cetera, et cetera. And you'll see them here to we'll bring this file back up. These are the ones that we just imported. So we naturally you wouldn't be importing five or you could, I do, but normally you would have hundreds, perhaps even thousands, but hopefully in the hundreds. So next up, we're going to go over to procurement transaction account rules, and we're going to copy the account definition. This is the seeded account definition, right? This is so we can update it. When we make one change to this, all right, so I'll give it a name, give it a short name, sign the chart of accounts. And now I have a copy and it'll come up like this. Now there's one specific thing that I want to do here, which is I want to override the account through a segment rule, which is a defaulted segment rule. It comes with the instance. Okay. I have set it for the charge account, save it. Now we have to activate it because it's incomplete the minute you create it. And now I have created the account definition that I'm going to use. Next up is we need to swap it out from the original. That comes default. Let's go find it. Let's go ledger and search. And let's go, let's put in purchasing here for the application. Go to the accounting options and you'll notice here transaction account definition we're going to swap it out for the one with that small change which is going to drive the natural account okay again all standard now we'll go over to mapping sets and we're going to do two specific updates first i'm going to show you we want only those created by the application that means those that came with it by default there's four we're going to focus on two the accrual which you need to have an accrual account and the target of this video, which is the 
natural account transaction builder. All right, so this is for accruals. We need to add our chart of accounts. And there it is. And then downstairs, we're just going to put in a default. Okay. And here we'll put the account. which is part of this accruals all. Everything's sort of generic here in this accounting structure. Now I could put the business unit name, okay? Or I can just set default and whatever business units there is going to be, and there's only the one or the one, one that's out there, so it's all good. So we save that, so accruals are set. The next up is actually where all the, the magic happens. And here we have the Sources as the BU name, the item category name, which is what we just uploaded. I'm going to add the chart of accounts. And now here I could start detailing out one by one this. And so I can do that. Or I can export the template, which is there. Let's open it up. Let's first activate it, unblock it. Let's open it up and it's blank. Now I'm going to go over to file that I already have here. So those are all, we want those all in here. And now here's all of the details. So I'm gonna just copy it and paste it. So those are all the outputs. Those are the accounts we want to tie to each and every category. So when it's added to a requisition, it's going to use the mapping for the output. Okay, and there they are. The categories all match. All right, so we do import. We're gonna go find that file. And where are you, Mr. File? There, mappings template two, open it. I could delete the existing, which is fine. There's none, so we'll just load it like that, and then you'll get a confirmation. And as we go downstairs, you can see them all. There's all the accounts mapped to the category. Now I'm going to create a default in an odd way. I'm gonna make this a default which is going to remove the miscellaneous category. Then I'm going to import it back in again for the fun of it, simply for the fun of it, right? So import it back in. I don't override, so all the ones that are there stay there. And now I have a miscellaneous as well as a default, whatever. Okay, so let's save that. Let's save and close that. And all of the mapping sets are done and we are ready to rock and roll. So I need to go over to users right and in order for the the full account combination we have to have the user have his expense account set so we're going to set the so it'll take all of the surrounding segments but not the natural account all right so i'm just gonna to show that i'm going to use one that makes no sense at all i'm going to use one in the sevens which is not operating generally right so i'm going to set him to that so if I didn't have this functionality in place, that's what would default for this particular user. So we have the surrounding segment set. Let's go over to procurements, go to requisitions, and I'm gonna show you how you can do some preferences here. I can put in favorite charge accounts, and those can be employed as well if you needed to. So we could set that, but I'm not gonna set that right now. So I already set it at the user level. I'm gonna put in a requisition and this is where the magic happens. So I'm gonna choose, it's a dash, SU dash. There we go. So I'm gonna choose MRO for the category, each price of, I don't know, 1200. And it's ready. So let's um, choose our supplier, automatically defaults that information and we'll add it to the cart. Okay, so let's go over to the cart and we'll review it and we'll see what's going on. See the account there, 64101? Let's go to here where you can see 64101, it maps. Okay, so let's go back and edit the line and we'll change the category. Let's make it uh, rent, say okay. Now you have to save it in order for it to rerun the accounting. So let's look at 61501, back to the, there it is, rent 65101. So all of the accounting now is driven 
automatically the accounting for the natural account, the surroundings, the, uh, the balancing segment and the cost centers coming from the user. So you have your natural account driven by the category. And so this is just an amazing way to eliminate and minimize errors by driving accounting by simply people using words versus numbers later on. And there's a lot of efficiencies that are missed in this stuff. So I hope this helps and I will catch you in the next one. So that's going to do it for this one, folks. If you found the information useful, why not consider using the subscribe button like a bookmark so you can have easy access to the information without having to search for it when you need it. I really hope you enjoyed your visit today and I will catch you in the next one.